guys, we are back for another day of Read Along with Elaine and we are reading from the Blue Witch and this week we are wearing our favorite shirts from places we visited. Now last October I had a chance to go to Maine around Bangor, Alexander, uh, all kinds of really fun towns in that area and I also got to go to St. Andrews which is uh, in Canada right across the border. So if you guys are listening in from Maine, Miss Elaine is giving you a big shout out today. So all right. What just happened in chapter 26? Uh, Abigail had to go face the music for using the spell book and turns out Kala stole the spell book out of her book bag. So when she was facing Melistra and everyone, they're like, okay, just give us the spell book. We'll fix everything, but the spell book's gone. So now Abigail's really in, uh, uh, in trouble now. So, and we left off Hugo. He had gotten knocked unconscious by some old witch. So we're going to pick up chapter 27 from Hugo's point of view. All right. Hugo swam back to consciousness to find the world a blurry kaleidoscope. He removed his glasses, wiping off smudges of black powder, then put them back on. Better. He sat up. He was in a shock of some kind. Sunlight poked through holes in the roof and a rickety door hung half off its latch. Hello, he croaked. His mouth was dry, as if he had swallowed a ball of cotton. Smoke rose from a small fireplace where a cauldron rested over the coals. Dried herbs hung from the ceiling. A table held jars of what looked like various sizes of pickled eyeballs. Gross. He tried to get up, then realized his feet were bound with rope. He bent to untie them, but when he touched the twine, a spark jumped out and shocked him. They were enchanted. That witch had done this to him, taken him prisoner and spirited him back to her lair, but why? Hugo had heard stories of what witches did to stray kids that wandered into their traps turn them into creatures, train them as their pets. He wasn't about to let that happen. Getting to his feet, he began hopping to the door. He had only made it three hops when the door was flung open and a young girl stood framed in the doorway. Her hair was lighter than Abigail's raven locks, almost brunette. Her large eyes sparkled with excitement. She was carrying a school bag over her shoulder. Her mouth dropped open in surprise as Hugo hopped toward her. Who are you? she asked. I'm Hugo. Who are you? Oh, you're Abigail's Balfin friend. Nice to meet you. I'm Kala. But why are you hopping? Hugo looked pointedly down at his feet and she groaned. Baba Nana, untie this boy immediately. Baba Nana, did this girl know the horrid witch who'd kidnapped him and tied him up like a hog? A wheezy laugh came from behind a ragged <laughs> curtain. The curtain was thrust aside and Baba Nana waddled out. Now, child, calm yourself. Baba Nana was only having a bit of fun. There was a loud crackle and the ropes around Hugo's feet disappeared. You know this witch, he said, still outraged over his treatment. Calla smiled. Of course, she's my godmother. She's taking care of me forever. The girl moved over to a small stove and put a kettle on. Would you care for some tea, she asked, as if it were perfectly natural for Hugo to be in this hollow. No. I'd like to go home, he said, edging toward the door, but a zing of witch fire made him jump back. You cannot leave until you tell me why you are asking about Lysandra, the old witch snarled. Now, Baba Nana, be nice. I have good news, Kala said. I've got it. Got what, child? Melissa's book of spells. She pulled a leather-bound book out of her bag and held it up. Baba Nana crowed with delight. Wonderful! But how ever did you get your hands on that? Wait a minute. Hugo recognized that book. You took Abigail's spell book. She clutched the book to her chest. 
Well, it's a good thing I did. She's in a heap of trouble. What do you mean? It was heartless. If Abigail was in trouble, she would need his help. Abigail used the book to send Endera and two other witchlings to the netherworld. She was called up to Madame Hysteria's chambers to face the consequences. I took it from her before she went in. Gala, you shouldn't have interfered, Baba Nana scolded. That spell book belongs to Melistra. She could have used it to bring those witchlings back. Gala blinked rapidly, her eyes shiny with tears. But I had to. This book is going to help me get my magic. Might help you, child, Baba Nana said, sounding kinder than Hugo would have guessed possible. Baba Nana doesn't know if she can find the right spell in there. And maybe no magic can undo the curse you've got. Curse? No, Hugo was interested. He pulled out his notebook. What curse? The glitch witch curse, Kala said. It stops me from getting my powers. I know I have magic. I can feel it at times, but... Something is blocking it. No time for that now, Baba Nana said. Every second we delay, those three witchlings are closer to death. We must bring them back before something terrible happens, or your friend will pay the price with exile. We'll need Abigail's help, Hugo said. Calla shook her head. She's been locked inside her room. The door will be guarded. There's no way we can sneak past them. Then we'll have to find another way. Hugo chewed on his pencil, looking over his note, and then paused. It was a crazy idea, but maybe, just maybe, it would work. We'll need an Omera, he announced. Baba Nana's eyes widened. Have you lost your mind, child? An Omera will tear your head off. Hugo grinned. Not if you call the right one. <laughs> oh, that's the end of that chapter. You go. He's trying to be brave here. Let's see. So he wakes up at Baba Nana's hut and he's trying to escape, but he's all tied up. And then Kala arrives and she's so excited because she's excited. She stole uh, the spell book because she thinks Baba Nana can help use it to help her get her magic because she doesn't have it because she got the glitch witch curse so hugo realizes that abigail is in trouble and bob and nana says if we don't get those witchlings back here yeah, she's going to be you know they're going to, it's going to be too late and she'll never be a witch and all that good stuff so now they need to go rescue abigail and figure something out so hugo looks like he's going to call an omera so i hope he doesn't get eaten right so all right guys that's it for today Oh, really getting far through this book tomorrow. We're going to be on chapter 28, so I can't wait. So until then, guys, you know what you can do? Click the link in the description. Do some of the worksheets. You can send them to me. I'd love to see them. All right, until tomorrow, guys, get outside, get some fresh air. Above all, stay healthy, stay happy, stay well. And Miss Elaine will be back for another day. I'll read along with Elaine tomorrow, all right? Elaine out.